Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, The Cloud Security Guy, uh, in which we talk weekly about things, topics around cloud security and artificial intelligence. So I wanted to start a new series uh, this time, guys, and I'm uh, basically focusing specifically on career advice, you know, helping you guys in your career. So, and especially cybersecurity, because it's a much wider topic. So I wanted to take a break from cloud security and AI and just uh, help you out as much as I possibly could uh, based on my experience of 20 years in various senior positions on like cybersecurity career paths. And like, if you want to basically move along in your cybersecurity career, uh, what to do about it. So cybersecurity, I think you already know is one of the hottest fields around, right? And if you want to succeed long-term, you definitely need to have a career path, okay? I mean, or if you look at the trends nowadays for the most in-demand jobs for the next 10 years or so, definitely it's uh, cybersecurity is one of them. Right, it's one of the fastest growing occupations projected for the next 10 years. And it's very much in demand, but it's also a very competitive field. You will not progress unless you have a career path in mind for the next three to five years. Uh, so more and more specializations in cybersecurity are coming out. And I wanted to highlight some of the career paths which are available for you uh, this year. And if you have a few years experience in IT, and if you want to transition into cybersecurity, or maybe you're already in cybersecurity, but you want to move into a more specialized area, right? So let's take a look. So this is for you if you're currently in IT, okay? So you, maybe into the start of your IT career, you might be working as a networking engineer or a help desk officer or a software developer, or maybe you've already started out in cybersecurity, but you're in an entry level, right? Information security officer, junior information security officer, but, but you want to transition into a more specialized cybersecurity role for the added responsibilities. And of course the pay will be better, right? So like there are many, many specializations available. And I wanted to take a look at the most in demand, like, you know, the SOC engineer, uh, security architecture, maybe the cloud security engineer, uh, penetration testing, or maybe even the management if you want to the management level. So let's take a look at each of these in detail. Uh, before we move ahead, guys, please do like this video and subscribe to this channel. Uh, that will really help this channel to grow uh, in the long run. You can comment if you possibly can, and it'll help to reach the make this channel reach the maximum amount of people. Thank you for that. So let's take a look at the, look at the first uh, uh, skill which we have. Uh, SOC analyst or SOC engineer uh, or an incident response analyst. I mean, there are multiple titles for this, but it's the same thing. So data breaches are unfortunately a daily occurrence. You know that with news of DDoS, ransomware, data thefts all over the news, right? Companies cannot afford their names showing up in one of these headlines. So this is where the SOC engineer shows up. Incident response is the name of the game. A SOC engineer needs to know where and how an event is happening and respond quickly. So what do you need to do? What skills do you need, right? You need to know is SIEM tools, okay? You need to configure those. If you're thinking, hey, I don't I don't have access to any commercial SIEM tools. There are many, many open source available. Just Google it, SIEM open source, uh, which, which is referring to the next thing, which is ELK, the ELK stash. If you know that a lot of very good open source SIEM tools are present, you can practice on that and actually really get a good handle on SIEM skills. But you definitely need to know SIEM because that's pretty much the name of the game. So you need to be able to integrate log sources, create alerts, uh, triaging incident, all those things you need to know, right? Uh, you need to know, most importantly, guys, Microsoft Excel. It's still the name of the game. You won't believe how many people still use Excel for analyzing large amounts of data sources. So a little bit of, you know, you know, knowing pivot tables and formulas will go a long way, right? Forensics. And most important, guys, I want to important something. This is not a technical skill, but you need to know how to work under pressure. You will be involved in like data breaches, incident responses, forensics. You need to know how when they, you have a very tight timeline and people are sitting on your head expecting you to respond. You need to be able to work under pressure. If you don't like pressure, if you don't want like uh, right, uh, things are like uh, exploding around you, please, this is definitely not the job for you. Okay. There are many certifications available. You can take a look at those. Uh, and yeah, they will definitely give you a good handle if you want to pursue this career path. I want to mention what else can you do? Okay, what's your future career path? You can become a SOC manager. Many companies have that. They need SOC teams once you have a few years experience. You can become a head of incident response or like data forensics. Or you could become an independent consultant also. If once you've worked on major, major incidents, a lot of times people have become independent consultants and they can advise many companies on how to set it up and all that. And there's a good lot of good money in that also. So you can look at that career path also if you want to interest in becoming a SOC analyst. What else is next? Oh, a cybersecurity architect. Okay, it, this guy, he is responsible for defining the security architecture of a company, right? And basically all the defense in depth layers, and you, you want to review projects to make sure that the new architecture does not introduce any risks 
So as part of change management and risk assessment, this really requires a deep understanding of system components, you know, networking, APIs, a good handle on documentation and presentation skills. Usually you need a few years experience of enterprise architecture before taking on this role. If, if, if this is a, like a dedicated role for that, what do you need to know? You need to know networking, security protocols, how components are talking to each other, because that's the only way you'll be able to do like threat modeling and be able to identify the risks. And you, you need to be able to justify the risks which you're highlighting, right? You need to be able to present it. You should be able to articulate complex like issues uh, to people in a very easy to understand way. Uh, dev, knowing DevOps is a good thing to know, okay? Because that will help you out. Uh, one skill, which is not written here, but you need to know, which is pragmatism. Uh, you need to know when to be firm and when not to become a blocker for business. So you need to know that balancing the pros and cons of each thing. For the certifications, you can do CISSP. I would, if you're serious about this, I would suggest you go with the TOGAF instead of a security cert. It is basically, it will really make you stand out. It's like the standard for the open group. It's the most popular enterprise architecture methodology. And it's like a framework, which is used by the world's leading organizations. You know, it's the most prominent and reliable enterprise architecture standard. Uh, based on like and many many big companies use this and honestly the people who are fluent in this Dunya Togaf they really give a lot of uh, credibility and they got a lot of good career opportunities and what can you do for the future career path it opens up for you uh, you could become potentially a cyber security manager because you already know how the architecture is set up and how the risks are set up you could become like a head of security engineering there's a lot of options for that it's definitely a demanding role and it's like a very interesting one also if you're interested in threat mm -hmm. modeling and how to highlight high level risks. Okay, what is this there? This is my favorite one, which is a cloud security engineer. So as a cloud security engineer, what does he do? Basically, I, I think I've, I have done a video on this, like basically about how the cloud security engineer works. I, I'll link it in this video, but you should be able to identify threats to cloud infrastructure and application. You should be able to identify risks and migrations on, you know, uh, workloads. You need to do automation, uh, cloud configurations, infrastructure as code, Risk identification, these skills you know, uh, you need you need to be able to highlight those risks. Okay, so from the and, and so definitely it's a very very cloud is a very hot field. I mean there's no shortage of these uh, people, believe me. And a lot of this is a very in demand job. If you are interested in that, definitely I would suggest you go for it. Uh, for the search, uh, you can do go with a cloud specific one like AWS, uh, like Google, like Azure, Oracle. I've I've done a video on that specifically. You can take a look on that. Uh, or you can go for a vendor agnostic, which is CCSK or CCSP. All of these are good uh, and they will really help you. But you need to have skills, guys. Know the cloud. Don't just rely on theoretical knowledge, okay? What does it open for you? Uh, you could become a cloud security manager if the company is serious about the cloud. You could become a head of cloud security like I was. If you have multiple clouds, if the cloud is, uh, infrastructure is expanding. Or uh, I didn't mention it here, but you could become an independent consultancy also. If once you're familiar with a lot of companies, they want to hire independent consultants who will guide them in their cloud journey so the really the options are really amazing with this thing okay so moving on uh, this is one of my favorites which is the penetration testing or the red teaming person uh this is by far one of the most exciting fields you know penetration testers and like ethical actors they're usually the rock stars of cyber security teams you know they find vulnerabilities they do bug bounty bug hunting but nobody knows things are vulnerabilities are there these guys will find them like offensive security and red teaming you know where you we actively try to bypass a company's defenses by role playing as an attacker. It remains one of the most sought after positions. And pen testers, usually pen testers, I know they moonlight as bug bounty hunters also, and it really uh, like shows off in their profile. Uh, so as a pen tester, you'll be expected to find out weaknesses and highlight those things to the what do you call uh, your cyber security team so they can fix them. Uh, what do you need? Like the first thing I would need, guys, for the, your uh, motivation or passion. If you do not have a passion in penetration testing, you will not go far. This is not your average nine to five security job. Okay, you need to be like really crazy about it. You need to be thinking about stuff, how to break into things night twenty four seven. Okay, uh, you need to know scripting, programming, because you need to be. If you don't like working for the command line, this is not the job for you. I can tell you that. And up, along with technical, you need to know social engineering. You need to be able to know how to trick people. Because a lot of times the initial vector is not technical, it's like a human thing. You need to know how to be able to play with that, play with social media profiles, emails, and all that, okay? Those things are, uh, from the certifications, I mean, there are many, many certifications already available, certified ethical hacker and offensive security and all that. But uh, honestly, guys, more than the certs, uh, I would definitely recommend you get on some bug bounty programs, 
and like actually try to have some of those on your profile if successful exploits okay there are many many programs available where you can enroll and if you have those on profile look i compromise i was able to find this bounty and i got paid x amount that really plays off more than the certifications that gives you a lot of legitimacy and for the future career path the most honestly i've seen that people usually become freelancers or independent consultants because they've seen it pays off much better you get a lot of money from bug bounties it's a very exciting field but like i said it really needs a uh, real passion for this so if you if you're just doing it on the side and you're thinking this is just something that will help me out uh, i would not recommend this field for you but it's definitely one of the most exciting things uh, in the cyber security industry and lastly which is cyber security manager so if you if you are passionate about cyber security but you want to move to a more senior position you know you want to be able to influence a team of people this position is for you you need to have the ability to communicate you know stakeholder management uh, like uh, be able to manage multiple stakeholders uh, budgeting if you don't like budgeting this job is not for you because you might be able to expect it to manage budgets and how that like uh, all the costs are going for, uh, and team management if you like a loner you like working alone this is not for you uh, because you will be able to expect it to manage people manage their expectations okay you need to have managerial skills i need to be able to articulate complex issues to the c level so this job is usually a stepping stone to becoming a ciso so for the certs uh, you can have cism cissp but the most important is having communication skills okay you need to be able to like manage people manage vendors manage the teams and be able to communicate those things uh, the future career path you have like lots of options becoming a head of cyber security chief information security officer this skill is definitely like uh, something which is in demand because people want somebody be do, to be able to come and manage all the different people which are working and uh, show some leadership skills so this is but these are the skills you need to have technical skills you need but you more than that you need to be able to communicate manage have confidence you you will be required to give a lot of presentations in this particular role so be ready for that if you don't like public speaking i would not recommend this position for you definitely so these were the a few of the positions guys i hope this was uh, useful to you this was just my starting point if you feel i could have added more do let me know in the comment section uh let me know if this is helpful for you and it helps you out in your career i'll be adding more to this cyber security career playlist so that we can help you out uh please do like and subscribe to this channel if this video was useful to you and thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video